morning, everyone. Welcome to God Day. Every day is a God Day, as I've just yes. read it on the screen. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Revelation Television and may not know ourselves, my name is Cyril Smith, and this is Brida, my wife. And yeah. if you're a new viewer to Revelation Television, you're very, very welcome. And uh, we are a privilege this morning to be able to speak the Lord's Word into your life today. And yeah. um, there's nothing more important than the Lord's word, the Father himself, when he said, and I just want to give you this to open the program this morning, Brida, for yes. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Our God is all about love and loving us. And his son so loved us that he went to the cross and uh, the last words he spoke was yes. forgive them for they know not what they do. The last thing he did was wash the feet of his apostles. All loving, caring, That's right. man and breeder. That's his spirit. That's right. And if we can reflect that and bring the Lord's love and the power of his love into our lives day by day, then uh, we are much freer from fear Yes. and all sorts of things, you know? That's so. right, because Cyril, do you know something? When you think of it, it says, we love him because he first loved us. So there's something about receiving the love of God into our hearts, and the outcome of that is that we love him. And so we can't even take uh, the credit for loving God, but because he loved us, the effect that had on us has us loving God. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? Amen. Yeah. And then, of course, that is the currency of his kingdom. The kingdom on earth is anything but. <laughs> all we have to do is look at the newspapers. But his kingdom is all about love and the power of his love. Yes. And uh, Paul saw that when he was talking to his, friend, his apostles and his uh, disciples in Ephesians. And he said, um, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he's, he's hoping that the Lord will instill the love and the awareness of his love in their lives so they can uh, go out and be his hands and his feet. Yeah. And I pray that you being, this is Ephesians 4, 17, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so big, it's hard for us to grasp. Yes, Peter. it is. It, <clears throat> takes, it takes time. I think as we keep reading the Word, well, we start to realize we start reading promises that God gave us. I mean, we've only to look at today and this coronavirus. And we say every day with many of you, Psalm 91. Yeah. God already in advance had something that would take away any fear from us. So as long as we dwell in the shelter of the Most High, yes. we can rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And when we read that psalm, we realize that God has everything covered. There's no surprises for God. He, has, he is, as Jesus said, he's like our father. He is our father. And so therefore, he already prepared that for this time. So he's very much in today. True, true Cyril? Yeah. Yeah. And he is his word, and he knows that when we express his word and speak and proclaim his word, we are releasing the power of his word. Yes. And we know we're in a fallen world and we meet with many ups and downs, but the Lord knows. And that's why, as in Psalm 91, which yeah. is a great protection psalm, but for instance, in, in 91 verse 14, 15, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. And he, as you said, really, yes. he gave us the love to begin with. So, you yes. know, it's, not, it, it's receive, receive, That's receive, right. and then in receiving it. But above all is to understand that when we speak his word, believe his word, release his word into circumstances, whatever may be facing you today, but to know that the Lord 
loves you and that his perfect love, as it says, That's drives right. out fear. You walk in a fear, having a fearless day if you're aware of how much the Lord loves you and how we ex- release that because nothing happens in the Lord's kingdom until we proclaim his word. So he has given us words. He's given us himself, um, the way, the truth, and the life. the life. And he has given us the truth to speak into circumstances yeah. and uh, t- will change those circumstances. And we have, could be a bit fearless about something today, a doctor's appointment, anything that may be facing it. But I learned a long, long time ago, there is nothing, nothing coming towards you today or us that ourselves and Jesus cannot cope with. That's right. Nothing. Nothing. That's right. And I remember every... having a little card and I sent it to an aunt of mine and it said on that little card, there is nothing that can happen today that you and I can't handle together. Meaning we put our trust in him and we know he can do it. And she couldn't get over this. It was one of those times she needed to keep reading that every day. And she did. And uh, she said to me, you've no idea how that little card helped me. So there are little things that help us. And one of the things is we don't do it in our own strength. That's why we don't try to conjure up God's love, dying on the cross, making ourselves love him. No, we don't do that. That would be doing it in our own strength. We just keep hearing the word. And the more times we hear the word, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Many of us have sons. And eventually we start realizing that God did that for us. And that in our spirit produces that understanding of how much God loved us. It's that, it's that word working in us that causes us to love God. It's not us causing ourselves to love God. Amen, Brita. And then when it comes to his commandments, we're commanded to love. <laughs> but you see, yeah, that's, that's a different a, that, love, isn't it? That's a hard one for us to take on board yes. on the natural. But again, he gives us the word. When we sow the seed of the word, we come to understand the word. When Brita said earlier, he who dwells in the house of the Lord uh, uh, will, will be... Will rest. Will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Will be a peace, whatever today yes. brings. You can be a peace in it knowing and dwelling in the Lord's presence, that it is his day today, do you know? And uh, I find that um, it's so important for, when he does tell us, command us to love our neighbor, Brita. Yes. And not only that, when we go on in a little bit, he tells us to, to, he commands us to love our enemies. (laughs) Yes. And then you realize we couldn't do that in our natural way. And the way we ourselves try to deal with the problems in our life, in our natural way, we're ignoring the power that the Lord's word gives us because he tells us in 2 Corinthians 10 4 the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world on the contrary they have divine power the Lord's word has divine power to demolish strongholds we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ so when we're faced with fearful thoughts about something, yes. anxiety, or any of the other atmosphere, things that we get into, that the, to be able to realize that the power of the Lord's word is a spiritual force, far, far superior That's to right. the natural force. When we apply that force in our lives by speaking out the Lord and believing that he does love us, care for us, and yes. so on. That's right. Then we have victory today, That's all day. Right. And we can say that scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you know, you're not only talking to your head when you say that. You're speaking the word of God and the word of God goes into your spirit. And it's our spirit that we're talking about here. Because when it goes into our spirit, again, it starts working. And it's the spirit that overflows into the mind and changes the mind. That's how the mind gets renewed. We don't just keep saying, I can't say that, I can't say that, I'm going to say this. No, we have to put the word of God into our spirit and it overflows into our mind. Now, we we still make mistakes. We will still maybe be emotional and we'll make, we'll have a reaction on an emotional thing. 
but the Holy Spirit will convict us and we'll be able to say immediately, Lord, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Or maybe you tick somebody off. I'm sorry, Lord, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. And we're straight back. The minute we say, Lord, I'm sorry, we're answering the Holy Spirit, who actually is the one that convicts us. So instead of us then going into depression, oh, I shouldn't have said, we just say, Lord, I'm sorry, help me to put this right. And the Lord will give you the opportunity to put that right, to be able to say, listen, I shouldn't <coughs> have said that. I'm sorry. And everything yeah, gets sorted. So it's a matter of really... The word. It's all, not about the word. it's all about, it's all the, about word. the word. It's not our and strength. Believing it, believing yeah, yeah. the word. You see, and then when you believe the word, and then you pray, you you speak it out, and then you witness the power of it, and you see testimonies, and you can see, and, and actually recognize that it is His word that has caused this circumstance right. to improve or get better. Then, then that's where you dwell, and then you step in more time with the Lord, and in so doing, you become more and more. Uh, faithful and more in believing that he does really love you and that he will see you through whatever the circumstances is or that is That's happening right. at that time you know <clears throat> now the but as I said it's through his uh, the divine power it's a spiritual power really. yeah uh, because we ourselves there's a description of us all of us in Galatians 5 uh, uh, 20 I was look on this uh, we're into we can be we can hit people, we are, we can dispute with people, we get yeah. jealous with people, we get into anger and rage and, and cause all sorts of things. That's us. <laughs> that's working on the on the emotions, on the flesh. That's and, working with the head. And that's the not natural. the heart. Yeah. And then yeah. when you try to operating from that point of view and try to deal with things, you're not operating in the divine power, which is in Galatians five twenty two, which is the fruit of the spirit. This is, you're moving into the spiritual power of the Lord. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness. There's no way you'll be doing that on your own. That's true. You need the Lord's word. <clears throat> and I always say that between Galatians 5, 20 and 21 and Galatians 5, 22 is the cross. You go to the cross, you die at the cross to the old self and you rise in the power of the yeah. spirit yeah. and knowing that no matter what comes towards you today, that the Lord's power is yeah. there. Brother. And you know, yeah. somebody said, it's a very good thing to say every day. And it, this is a reminder. Our problem is not remembering. We do forget. And we're straight into the day. <coughs> and we're dealing with stuff all around us. Telephone calls, meetings, whatever it is we have to do. And if we don't stop and say, I no longer live but Christ, it is Christ who lives in me. So we're reminding ourselves that it's not all about us, but it's about the one who lives in us. And as time goes on, if we, this person was teaching about this, as we declare that to every day, we hear it. It goes into our heart and we start to realize that we start to say, Lord, will you help me today with this situation? Mm. Lord, will you help me mm. today? I need a parking space when I get to work or when I get to the shopping center or whatever, we start then to apply that. But it's all to do with practicing it first and speaking those words and then they work. It's the word of God working in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Amen. So that's, we're all in the same boat and that's what we do. Yeah. And the love of the Lord Amazing. that just overflows is never very, that it is his heart, that is him love joy peace and when we can apply that and which he tells us that that's how we can apply it by speaking it then his word comes alive today i love the fact that the he, that was the way the lord went really he was teaching his apostles yes um, and his disciples on the roads of galilee and his church there was a lot of healing he that's was either right. coming from healing or he was going towards healing. towards healing and in between he did stop and eat a little yes. and spoke yeah, parables and yeah. truth but the reality of it is that the lord's church heals today for those who believe and that's the so, lord heals so today. important and when the disciples saw that happening that yes. when the lord spoke when jesus spoke and people the blind were healed and and the deaf could hear and the all that the lepers were he was, cleansed hmm? the lepers were cleansed yeah when they, when they saw that by just the pure speak, hearing from god and speaking it
That's and right. it coming to pass. It, it, it just sort of, what, what do we do? How do? What do we do about this? And it tells us in John 6, he said, all you have to do is to believe in the one he sent. That's so right. let us believe. It's a great place to start. Yes. You believe in the Lord's word, you speak it into it. Uh, speaking love into maybe this disharmony at home at the moment. That's maybe an angry situation. And you say, I'm not going to go that way. Because that's what he did. Peter. He walked wherever he spoke. He spoke the opposite. He called things that were not as though they were. Oh, yes. He already, yes, arrived, yes. He spoke peace. And that's the last yes. thing we feel like speaking is into an argument or being angry. A peace. Okay. Yes, yes. He, he was seeing the outcome. He was calling that which was not as though it were. It was like um, Abraham with the, w without a child. He was calling, the Lord gave him a name, the father of many nations. People were laughing because he didn't have a family, he didn't have any children. But he kept saying, I'm the father of many nations. And those words that God gave him, that name that God gave him, that's God's word to him. It started, he started to believe, yes. God said, I'm going to have a son. And his faith was stirred up. And he had that son, which was Abraham Isaac, was his son. So we, when we speak the word of God, that word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword. It has power to do in us what it says. So that's why, Cyril, I think you're going to talk about 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 13, really. Yes, yeah. we're saying, how do we, how do we walk in love it's very difficult we could think you know you're at work you're maybe having a difficult situation with somebody or you're at home there's a difficult situation in the house or you need a job all these things but you know something are we are still called to love and that love isn't emotional it's 1 corinthians 13 Verse 48. It is, but yes. you know them by heart practically. I do, always. I do know them. But we can speak it out. This is what yes. the Lord sees. That we can see love in a different way, but this is how the Lord speaks it. Love is patient. He's been patient with us. Yes. Love, love is, is kind. kind. Uh, therefore, the next time you feel a bit of that you're being unkind, it's well, like, as you say that, you see, I, when we yeah. read through that list, we can say what, yeah. what we find with love it. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. This is the Lord's word speaking about his, what he considers love is. It does not boast. It is not pride. It does not, uh, it, it does not dishonest others. It is not self-seeking. Dishonor others, sorry. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. So love and truth go so well together. Yes. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. The love, love of the Lord never, never fails. fails in our lives. Yes. And we speak that. That's right. It, we, 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 we just, it's like turning on a switch with electric. That's right. We need to turn on the switch and the power comes through. Yes, I have an experience. I, ha I started, to, I heard this, you know. If you just declare that every day, God says, remember, he said to uh, Joshua. So Joshua was to read what he, his covenant every day. So our covenant is love, to love God and love our neighbor as ourself. So if we're going to be renewing our minds, we think, how do we do it? Well, not in our own strength. Because we could be in good form one day and do it right. We could be in bad form another day and we don't care. But we have to let the power of God change us. So when we read that every day, then that starts to, it starts to work in us. And I had an experience that I shared one night, but I don't think I have time to share it tonight, today. How many minutes? Have I? Three, um, three well, I was with Cyril in the kitchen and we were going to, the kids wanted... The grandchildren wanted omelettes. So Sarah was going to make omelettes. And I was there mm. and there was no table set. There was no bread cut. There was no water on for the, the tea. There was nothing done. And Cyril started beating up eggs. And I thought, imagine, he's beating up the eggs. We're not even organized. We haven't even got the mushrooms washed. Nothing's done. And Cyril's beating up the eggs. So I thought, 
immediately, I was going to say, what are you doing? And immediately, love is patient. I started saying nothing. So I said nothing. And we went on ahead then and got, and then Cyril turned around and said to me, are you peeling those mushrooms? So I knew by his voice he was saying, what are you doing peeling them for? So I said nothing again. And I just, I just peeled away at them and we got everything ready. We were sitting at the table. The kids were talking about their day. They were telling us different things that had happened. And as I was sitting at that table, the thought, the Holy Spirit put a thought in my mind. Wasn't it a good thing to say nothing? Because here we were laughing and talking and there was no big deal about peeling mushrooms or beating up eggs or the table's not set. All that stupidity wasn't even on the table. But the kids were there and we were having a great evening with them. So they're just little things, but it says in the Bible, it's the little foxes that ruin the vine. So when we catch it in time, it can be a good thing. Do you remember that, Cyril? I do remember very well, Brida. <laughs> Love never fails. That's, That's what I right. Do. I could end the program there, but I want, I want to explain it more. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. You see, because something is spoken and then it comes to pass. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Tongues will, we will pass from this earth. Where there is knowledge, it too will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. And that is as we know the word. But, and we don't stay there just in the word. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. And for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Now that's love not failing. In no matter, there are other things will pass, etc. But now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is it's love. love. That is the Lord's word, and that's we recognize right. it. And we don't stay, for, you know, we can be in a religious situation, we just pray the word, speak the word, but we don't speak with the believing and the power of the word. And that's where you move into that and you leave the childish rhythm speech behind and come into the power of the spirit. And that is your maturity and knowing the Lord. Brito, we're in the last 30 seconds of our day. Lovely today. to be with you. Uh, very nice of you. And uh, for those of you who do, if you are new to um, the Revelation Television, do return to it. My name is Cyril Smith and uh, Brita, my wife, and we will be with you again and share another God day with you. So be blessed until we see you for the next time. Uh, it's bye-bye from myself and uh, bye-bye from Brita. Amen. Amen. Bye-bye. Good evening, pleased to meet you, sir. Where are you uh, from? From London, England. In order to continue um, in this positive role, which I'm, I'm very uh, eager to see and participate in myself personally, what would you say to encourage us to look to the future and we can continue to help? Is there a new way, perhaps? Well, I, I think it's spreading the truth about Israel as opposed to the many falsehoods that are leveled against it. You know, the, you spoke about the evils of the last 2,000 years. Those evils were made possible because of defamation, because of vilification, because of the, uh, because of the lies that were spread about the Jewish people. And always, uh, uh, physical brutality was preceded by, uh, by a web of lies. Uh, and I think that working the other way, building a bastion of truth about Israel and the Jewish people and the Jewish state, is the greatest corrective of that. And uh, fortunately today, we have a Jewish state, and we have uh, many Jewish and many non-Jewish friends that can fight the battle of truth, which I believe is the most important battle for uh, the future of the state of Israel. Thank you very much. I agree with you entirely with Thank that. You. Thank you, I appreciate it. Anti-Semitism.
It's a word that we are very familiar with uh, in the news that we live in, in the world that we live in today, and you think it was all about today, or it only started sort of yesterday or in man's memory. Anti-Semitism has been happening since the Lord chose a people way, 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 way back. And therefore, uh, this world has opposed those people. If we consider, and it, is, it appears to be today, uh, amongst many Christian circles, that anti-Semitism is, a, is a, a place of a, a political judgment or a political thinking and or geographical thinking. Uh, Anti-Zionism, anti-Semiticism, one and the same thing. And they are in total contradiction to the Lord's prayer, would you believe? The very home of our own basic Christian belief. The apostle said to Jesus, how do we pray? And he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. To be anti-Semitic today is to be in total contradiction of the Lord's kingdom coming on this earth. It was from those people, the Jews, as it tells us in Romans 11:17, we are grafted in. They are our spiritual brothers. It's a spiritual battle we're in the middle of. And here's Galatians 3, verse 14. Jesus redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles, that's us, through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. The people, the Jewish people, we're living under the Abrahamic covenant, these covenant and wonderful promises. We were outside of that. And Jesus went to the cross to redeem us in order that the blessing given to Abraham, I will bless you, you will be a blessing, health, well-being, loving relationships, all the blessings and promises of the Lord were for his people. And here it is that he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to us. And he really locks that in in Ephesians 2, where there's a description, as he says, about circumcision, uh, physical circumcision, and heart circumcision, mental circumcision. It was the Lord's desire to make one people. And that's what he did when he went to the cross. And in uh, uh, Ephesians 2, let's start at uh, 12, just remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, that's us, excluded from citizenship in Israel, we were not part of anything and foreigners to the covenants of the promise that I just mentioned, without hope and without God in our world. So we are a grafted in people. But now in Christ, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Jesus went to the cross to bring us close to our spiritual brothers. And before, it just strikes me, this Bible is full of many, many disobedient people, but it does not change the Lord's word for his people. His purpose, the Lord's purpose, was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in the one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. And I could go on. Uh, for through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. It's the Lord's desire, my kingdom come, my will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. A oneness of his people, born out of the Jews, and he himself, Christ on earth, and redeemed. We are redeemed as Gentiles, not in any part of that promise, but we are able to take partake. Anti-Semitism is the direct opposite of the Lord's command. His kingdom will come regardless of our disobedience. Amen.